Mikel Arteta on the 4th of February against Liverpool made a massive tweak to his system which played a huge part in a dominant 3-0 win over the current league leaders and keeping the title race alive. We've known Arsenal to typically set up in a 4-3-3 with inverted wing backs and 5 attackers occupying defences but and rightly so, managers will look to make tweaks from time to time. This system was a lot different. This win may have given Arsenal some vital momentum in a vital moment as well as they went on to thrash West Ham 6-0 away from home in their next game. But against Liverpool, Zinchenko played a more traditional role and there was a huge change in midfield. So what exactly was different? During early build-ups, Arsenal's tactical approach involved creating a high density of players in essential areas, utilising a 3 plus 2 plus 2 structure that enabled them to exert control over the area and keep possession of the ball. Zinchenko, as mentioned, had a different role to the typical inverted movements. During early build-ups, he was often an outlet ball Arsenal could use to evade Liverpool's press and was a pivotal factor in Arsenal's ability to move the ball forward and into progressing opportunities. Overall, this allowed Arsenal to maintain a strong presence in the centre and capitalise on their newly tweaked midfield shape. That newly tweaked shape was a box of four in midfield which consisted of a Rice, Jorginho double pivot, Erdegaard and Kai Havertz on top of the box. As most top sides do, Arsenal looked to create an early numerical advantage in their build-up which often made it an 8 plus 6 and with Arsenal having a plus 2, they had a range of options to progress and move the ball forward. The positioning of Erdegaard and Havertz played a crucial role in keeping Liverpool's centre-backs pinned to their positions. Liverpool's full-backs were also pinned by Saka and Martinelli which also played a part in creating an 8 versus 6 situation as the Liverpool full-backs couldn't jump to join the press or they would just leave their free man. This gave Arsenal more control in this phase of the game with players able to receive the ball in between the lines when Liverpool pushed forward to press. It was expected that Liverpool would use high pressing tactics during Arsenal's goal kicks. However, Arsenal had a plan to counter this, using long balls from time to time. The Arsenal players were positioned well to collect the second ball and Martinelli was always prepared to attack the space behind Konate who had the responsibility of marking Havertz. Confusion. Arsenal's first half performance in particular was superb, helped by the tweak system. Arsenal's shape now looked more like a 4-4-2 formation, with Kai Havertz and Martin Odegaard playing as the false nines. When Arsenal pressed high, the two would watch a central defender each, while Jorginho and Rice pushed up to mark the first line of Liverpool's central midfielders. This made it super hard for Liverpool to play through the centre of the pitch and it also meant that whenever Arsenal had to drop off into a mid-block, Arsenal could have a solid 4-4-2 out of possession shape about them. The box of four players worked together seamlessly with great intelligence and coordination and there were also the four players who covered the most distance on the day, with a special mention to Jorginho who put on a masterclass performance and installed that calm in possession that Arsenal required. With Kai Havertz playing on the left of the two with Martin Erdegaard on the right filling the half spaces while the two wingers were positioned up high, this created a complex set of problems for the Liverpool centre-backs. The tactical decision proved to be a particularly effective effective one as the first goal highlights how difficult this was for Liverpool to handle. As described by Arsenal, early in the move Havertz dropped deep to knit a move together as we played through Liverpool's press, bouncing a Jorginho pass back to Gabriel. Havertz then continued his run from deep as play developed, arcing a sprint inside Konate who was distracted by Martinelli out wide. Then, as Erdegaard, who had drawn Van Dijk towards him and out of position, slipped a wonderful through ball into the gap. Havertz was in the clear. The German may have been denied in the 1v1, but Saka was thankfully on hand to score a priceless opening goal. Arsenal hardly allowed Liverpool any breathing space in possession and was just electric out of possession as they were in possession. Arsenal limited Liverpool's chances maintaining balance between attack and defence and dominated the game. During the match the attackers led a high press which put a lot of pressure on Liverpool's defenders. This resulted in defenders making unwanted decisions particularly during the first half. Arsenal showed their aggression making 8 high recoveries compared to Liverpool's 1. The whole team ran a total of 1 116.8 kilometers with skipper Erdegaard leading by the example by covering 12.75 himself. This was his personal best of the campaign and the second highest individual figure overall. 
But that, my friends, was the Arsenal versus Liverpool tactical analysis. Now we are going to go into Football Manager where this tactic created a killing in the game. This seems like a good time to mention the Patreon. If you are enjoying today's content, then please consider supporting through the Patreon, where you will get the heads up of tactical videos that we are looking to create before anybody else. So consider joining the Patreon like these beautiful people, and I will see you on the other side. On the other side? So this is the beauty that got us the Premier League title in Football Manager, also got us to the Champions League semi-final and the FA Cup final where we lost to Manchester City, I believe, 1-0 in the final. Most impressively though is how we performed in the league with the most goals, we had the most shots for, the fewest shots against and the most possession, 62% of the possession complete and the second most passes in the league, second behind Manchester City. We also had the lowest, which would equal the best opposition passes per defensive action and the best defence in the league with the most clean sheets and the fewest conceded. Back to the tactic, the reason why our centre attacking midfielder is slightly to the right is so we can sort of create that 4-4-2 formation, especially off the ball. And then also we can create that box formation with the central striker dropping and then there, boom, we've created our box midfield with the two deep line playmakers or deep line midfielders and the two attacking midfielders and then hopefully what you would get is Martinelli making runs and Saka making runs off the two as well. In possession the team instructions are fairly simple we are using the attacking mentality because I want things to be electric. Attacking width is set to fairly wide so we are trying to look more for those sideway passes as well when we are trying to build up because attacking mentality they will look to play more direct so we do want to get more sideway passes going on. Playing out from the back short of passing directness with a slightly higher Higher tempo. In transition, when you do lose the ball, we are going to try and counter press, winning that ball back immediately. And when possession has been won, I did tell you in the last video, I've got an intriguing 4 2 3 1 tactic at Arsenal that doesn't use the counter attacking instructions. If you are chasing a goal, you will want to use this um, instruction, or if you're trying this tactic out, I would say kind of mid-table teams and teams that you want more counter-attacking opportunities but also more attacking output than just use counter. I did try it out and you don't actually lose much possessional numbers anyway. Goalkeeper in possession, distributable to the centre-back and take short kicks. Lastly, out of possession, high press with a high defensive line, more often trigger press, prevent that short goalkeeper distribution and step up more. For the away version is more based on counter attack so now the pressing forward is on attack with the central midfielder or the central attacking midfielder now on support our dm is also on defense and as you can see here now we are more counter attacking we are looking to take up on our counter attacking opportunities i also forgot to mention as well be more disciplined because we are on attacking players are looking to express themselves and roam around from positions but we don't necessarily want that we kind of want positional play we want martinelli stretching the pitch we want saka stretching the pitch and then we kind of want havertz and Erdegaard doing their thing being more disciplined rather than havertz trying to do saka's role and Erdegaard trying to do martinelli's role and all of that pizzazz <laughs> I do have a version when you want that striker to pin that centre back almost at all times with the DLF on support. A lot of the times you would leave that defensive line so the defenders, the centre backs weren't really occupied. So if you want one where the centre backs are constantly pinned then there is a version for that. Now Martinelli is on support as the striker is on attack. So I will whiz through the instructions. For the left back, we've got to take more risk, stay wider, tackle harder. The right back is tackling harder and the centre back taking more risk as well. The double pivot on the left hand side, we've got to take more risk, tackling harder. The reason why I've kind of got the deep line playmaker on the left, on the right rather than the left, the Jorginho role, is because it kind of made more sense with the formation, with the system and the balance. The deep line playmaker will hold his position here. Defensive midfielder can actually sort of move forward into this little area here as well, that little vacated space if needed. On the left hand side, cut inside with the ball, tackle harder. On the right, Saka stay wider and tackle harder. Basically tackle harder on everyone. In attacking midfield, we did have Rom from position. I'm not exactly sure why it's not there. There we are. Wrong from position, closed down more as well to try and get that 4 4 2 shape. And then lastly, up front, we've got the deep line forward tackling harder. So there you are. You can see it in the Premier League. We played 38 games, winning 32, scoring 103, and only conceding 22. In the Champions League, we got to the semi final, getting knocked out by Inter Milan. In the FA Cup, we lost in the final to Manchester City. Kind of a harsh game there. They created the only clear cut chance, but we did create more half chances, I guess, with a higher XG, but 
the game isn't ran on XG. The Community Shield, we also came runners up. We hate Manchester City, basically. And in the Carabao Cup, we got knocked out in the quarterfinal by Sheffield United. Of course, in the Cups, I was using a rotated team. But unfortunately, that wraps up today's video. If you have enjoyed today's video, it would be hugely appreciated if you could like the video and if you can afford to support the channel through Patreon. I'll see you guys soon. Stay safe. God bless and peace out.